January was the second worst month on record for NHS accident and emergency department waiting times. Figures released this morning show that 85.3% of patients were seen within four hours, up from 85.1% in December, but still far short of the 95% target. Martin Berry is from the College of Paramedics and is also a practising paramedic himself. He joins us now from Oxford. Um, what is it like at the moment being out on the road working as a paramedic? It's tough. My paramedic colleagues and other healthcare professionals across the NHS and private and independent sectors are frankly exhausted, um, performing amazing tasks every day to do what they need to do to treat patients and find workarounds, find some way that they can provide the patient the care they need, um, what has been another very challenging winter. Uh, not, it was feared that this was going to be the worst month on record, but it turns out that that was December. Have you felt it easing at all over January? Um, frankly, no. Uh, as I said, you know, staff are exhausted and they're continuing to work. And yes, there has been a slight drop in pressure, but the pressure is still enormous. And, you know, making comparisons to what it was last month or even last year is a bit of a non-argument because we have to remember these are exceptional circumstances that we're comparing them to. Yes, it may not be as busy, but it is still exceptionally busy. So what is the solution? More money, more staff are, are the obvious ones. We're already starting to see some new innovations. You take the paramedic profession, we're seeing more paramedics with specialist practice trying to manage more patients in the community. We're seeing more paramedics work with GPs in surgery. So patients can actually see healthcare professionals to get appointments when they need to, rather than having to go to the already A&Es. Um, but we do need to think differently. And we're very pleased to see the amalgamation of health and social care. But we now need to see that investment in social care. We need to start treating people in the community better. We can put the clinicians in the community, but if we haven't got the 24-hour services, we haven't got the seven-day-a-week services, we haven't got the referral pathways, there is nothing else that we can do for them, and we need those services to support the clinicians to do what's right for the patient. In terms of, of pressure on resources, you do see, hear all these tales about ambulances lining up outside hospitals waiting to get people in. I mean, do you think that, essentially, we almost need to start considering building more facilities, building more hospitals? Potentially, um, we need to really understand whether or not we're using the resources that we are effectively at the moment. But it is quite clear if we haven't got the beds, we haven't got the wards to move patients onto, and then if we haven't got the social care to move patients out of the hospital back in their own homes, which is where they want to be, then that's just going to cause a problem. And yes, the A and E's are exceptionally busy, but we do need to remember that while they're keeping that ambulance waiting outside that department because there isn't a bed available, that ambulance isn't available to answer a 999 call. Yes, the patient may not have a bed available, but they're in a safe environment. They're in a hospital. The patient at home who's having a heart attack, who's phoning 999, hasn't got anybody. So we do need to make some difficult decisions. Martin Barry from the College of Paramedics, thank you.